In past videos, we've talked about 10x passive probes and why you're most likely going to use uh, 10x probes instead of 1x probes when probing your circuits. And the main reason was bandwidth and loading. So when I talk about loading, I'm really talking about capacitive loading. So I want to take a little bit closer look at that today and how even capacitive loading of passive probes is something you ought to keep in mind. This Tektronix P2221 is a good example of a switchable uh, 1x, 10x probe. And in the 1x mode, it's only 6 megahertz of bandwidth, a 1 mega ohm loading that comes from the scope, and uh, nearly 100 picofarads of capacitive loading. In the 10x mode, you can see the bandwidth jumps to 200 megahertz. It's got a 10 mega ohm resistive impedance, but a 16 picofarad capacitive load. Certainly a lot less than the nearly 100 picofarad load, but even that 16 picofarads might make a difference. Now, higher performance uh, passive probes will generally have lower capacitive loading. This older P6138 is a 350 megahertz probe. Uh, again, 10 mega ohm input impedance, but the capacitive loading is just 10 picofarads. It's starting to sound pretty good. Now, the vast majority of 10x probes kind of top out at 500 megahertz, uh, kind of like this P6139. If we take a look at the specs for the P6139, you have 500 meg, 10 mega ohm, and 8 picofarads of loading. And again, that's pretty typical and pretty low capacitance for a, a 10x probe. Now, a bit of a standout in the field of passive probes is this uh, TPP1000. as a 1 gigahertz passive probe, only 3.9 picofarads of loading. And that's about the lowest you'll find in any uh, passive probe, but there's only certain scopes that this particular probe will work with. To get the lowest possible loading, you're generally going to have to move to an active FET probe, like this P6243. This is also a 1 gigahertz probe, but notice that the capacitive loading is rated at less than 1 picofarad. Okay, so why all this talk about the capacitive loading of these probes? Well, think about it. A 10 mega ohm input impedance resistive, and let's say it was a 10 picofarad input capacitance. Once you get above just a few kilohertz, the capacitive reactance is less than 10 mega ohms. So above a few kilohertz, the, the probe itself is going to look like a capacitive load. And as the frequency goes up, the capacitive load is going to get heavier and heavier on your circuit. You get up into several megahertz and even higher, then even 8 or 10 picofarads can dramatically affect the circuit operation. So you do have to think about that. So when you're probing your circuits with your 10x passive probe, it's no different than sticking an 8, 10, or 12 picofarad capacitor on that circuit node to ground. How will your circuit react to that? It's something you have to consider. Now some circuits, it may not matter. At lower frequencies, they may not matter. But when you start working on higher frequency circuits above a couple of megahertz, that capacitive loading can dramatically affect the operation of some circuits. It really depends on the node impedance that you're probing, this particular circuit design, and what that circuit would do with that additional capacitor uh, connected at that point to ground. Now to illustrate the point, I'm going to use this little crystal test oscillator. I'm going to probe around the crystal that's used uh, in the base oscillator circuit. And we'll probe it with a P6139 with 8 picofarads of loading, a TTP1000 with 3.9 picofarads of loading, and then our active probe that has less than 1 picofarad of loading. And we'll look at the effect of that. Okay, channel 1 of the scope is looking at the output of this crystal oscillator, which is coming from an emitter follower buffer. We can see that the frequency of the oscillator is 7.9976 megahertz, and the amplitude is around a little over 2 volts peak to peak. So first up is our P6139. This is a 500 megahertz probe with just 8 picofarads of loading. I'm going to probe right around the crystal inside the crystal oscillator. We can see that the frequency has dropped to 7.9974 megahertz, and the output amplitude has actually dropped to about 1.7 volts. So just due to 8 picofarads of loading placed in the wrong spot of this oscillator. Okay, next up is our TPP1000, a 1 gigahertz probe with just 3.9 picofarads of loading. Let's connect that up to the same node. You can see the frequency dropped, but not as much, 7.9975 megahertz. My output amplitude dropped from 2.1 down to 1.82, 1.84 volts. So not quite as much of a drop in that output amplitude. Okay, so next up is our active probe with just one picofarad, or less than one picofarad of capacitive loading. And probing that same spot on our oscillator, we can see that the output amplitude has not dropped very much. It says 2.12 volts, and the frequency, 7.9976, didn't change. 
So we can see that having a very low capacitive load didn't affect the circuit nearly as much as even just a couple of picofarads of loading that we had with our ordinary passive probes. Now in each case we're also using these very short spring type uh, ground clips to minimize the inductance through the ground path. So the lesson here is pretty simple. Just be sure to consider the capacitive loading of the probes that you're using and the circuit that you're testing to understand whether that amount of capacitive loading is going to negatively impact the operation of that circuit. Generally, the higher frequency that you're operating at or the higher impedance the nodes are in that circuit, or especially when you're dealing with things like RF and tuned circuits where small amounts of capacitance can make a difference, the effects of the capacitive loading of your passive and even active probes may potentially affect that circuit. So be sure you've got a way to back up the measurement that you're making, maybe monitor it in a different spot, just to ensure that when you attach a probe, you're not negatively impacting the operation of the circuit. I hope you enjoyed today's probe tips video and learned a little something about capacitive loading, particularly of 10x passive probes. Or at least, I've learned now to consider how the input capacitance of these probes might potentially affect the operation of your circuit. Think about things like operating frequency, and node impedance and the node sensitivity to additional capacitance and how that might affect how that circuit operates. And it's always a good idea to be able to monitor a circuit if possible from different locations while probing in another location to see if that particular probe and the loading placed by that probe is going to affect the operation of that circuit. If you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And of course, ring the little bell below this video to get notified when I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.